Welcome to Belong, Become the Ascent. This is your host, Patrick Taylor from Reach Out on Campus. I am joined here today with Maggie Hoover, Josh Beck, as well as the one and only Mr. Dodger Vaughn. Howdy. So what we got going on today, Dodger? Well, we've got a brand new episode of Rock's video podcast for you all, and we're really excited to be back here with you. If you missed us last week, and shed a few tears, listen, we have a good reason that we were off, and so actually... I'm going to turn things over here to Patrick here in a second. He's going to explain to you uh, where he was, and Patrick is kind of the, the man when it comes to the video podcast. And so he took a week off to go out to uh, be trained with Helping His Hands, disaster relief training. So we've got someone within the campus ministry where we can respond locally to disasters that happen. And so, Patrick, if you would share with us a little bit about what you were able to do, what you learned, and what you took out of the experience with Helping His Hands. Yeah, and definitely it is definitely an experience. Um, I was unfortunately missed out last week. Um, I was able to make it down for the Reach Out on Campus ministry group that we meet on Mondays. Um, however, I did travel uh, out of the county for the training um, with Helping His Hands. Definitely an awesome, good experience. Had a lot of fun, definitely learned a lot. Uh, kind of went in as an open mind of, you know, there's some things that uh, I have already learned throughout my life. Um, and career in the healthcare field, um, but working with them and being able to kind of pick up on some different things and kind of refresh on some things was actually really cool. Um, good experience of learning how to triage patients as well as uh, working with healthy equipment and learning with chainsaws and stuff like that because that is a very high need whenever a disaster strikes, especially just recently we had uh, Hurricane Ian hit Florida, um, which is devastating down there. Um, I've seen many of the pictures and video footage of that, which is very, very crucial and very critical to have somebody that's able to go down there. Um, and that's actually kind of where Helping His Hands went to this past week. Uh, we kind of uh, shaved up our uh, training a little bit early, and uh, they loaded everything up and took off and went right down there to help everybody and stand alongside an excellent group, excellent mm -hmm. ministry and kind of tell us a little bit about how your experience is with them, Dodger. Yeah, so uh, we actually got connected with Helping His Hands back during spring break of 2018. And so that was actually before we even planted here at the campus ministry at the University of Rio Grande. And uh, we got to serve with them in Wallace, North Carolina. And we were doing um, hurricane disaster uh, cleanup and recovery down there. So we were doing some uh, framing, some drywall, uh, do a little bit of, you know, like just exterior cleanup, things like that. Um, but we really just kind of fell in love with the ministry, um, the way that the folks from Helping His Hands, including my buddy Scott Shipman, who's the director there, really just love on people in Jesus' name. And um, he gives us the opportunity to come down and provide them with a little bit of muscle for the week and help out. And uh, just, just an incredible group. And then we actually went back in 2021, past, it was this past summer, and we had some of our RIO students come with us to that. We went to their headquarters, which is in Vincennes, Indiana. And we got to kind of see their base of operations um, because they do a lot not only around the United States with the disasters that happen, but they are really a good member of the community out there, do a lot with helping um, people who are struggling with food security issues, things like that. Um, they have a warehouse there where they um, do a lot of clothing drives and um, really just loving on the people of Vincennes. And uh, actually another thing, um, helping his hands, their staff there was actually praying for uh, for reach out on campus as we were planting the campus ministry here at the University of Rio Grande too. So those two ministries are really have some deep bonds that we formed over the years. And so we're really excited because we plan to serve with them uh, during spring break of 2023. And so this is a shameless plug. If you don't have plans yet for spring break, you should really consider going to serve with us. And we don't know yet where that will be. It might very well be in Florida I'm still working on the Hurricane Ian uh, cleanup, but it may be the place of the next natural disaster. But either way, it's an opportunity to go and serve and love people in Jesus' name. Yeah, and it's definitely a really good opportunity. Those who haven't been on a mission trip or mm -hmm. um, been able to go out there and kind of be boots on the ground um, yeah. for disaster cleanup, uh, definitely really good time. Uh, you learn a lot and you have a lot of fond memories of that. A lot of people from that go on our mission trips actually come back saying that was the, you know, the best part of their life and they had a really fun time doing that. But yeah, we're going to jump right into the topic today, um, which is kind of a touchy subject, not going to lie. 
Uh, we're going to kind of touch on the temptation and peer pressure. Um, kind of focused on what kind of college students um, go through, which can be many different things. Um, we're not going to kind of go into that due to the detail. Um, but kind of what does the student ministry look like when you have to deal with temptation of your students coming in and learning and they may tell you the stories and stuff like that. What's kind of the, the thought on that, Dodger? <laughs> You're wanting me to get some people in trouble, aren't you? No, I would <laughs> never do that. Um, but no, I, I think, you know, you're, you're right that when students leave home and go to college for the first time, obviously there's a lot of temptation. There's a lot of things that, you know, especially if they've grown up um, around a faith community that they know that's not honoring God, that's not good for them. Um, the interesting thing about college for a lot of students is, you know, like especially coming from high school where you, you've kind of got a group that you fit into, right? You know, it might be a, a friend group. Maybe you're on the wrestling team and that's your group, or maybe your friends from work, you all hang out. But um, when you graduate and you go on to college, what you find is like you go from having all these groups that you've been a part of for years to now you have no groups. But like an interesting thing is that there's all these groups now that want you to come and belong to their group and be a part. And so again, some of them, are, you know, they're, they're not bad. Like there's a lot of really, really good cl clubs at Ohio University and the University of Rio Grande that um, are like business clubs or professional clubs that you could be a part of, and those are great. But there's also a lot of communities that are doing things that aren't God honoring, that aren't leading you closer to a relationship with Jesus. And so those are kind of things that, you know, we want students to be aware of before they come to the university, because we believe that, you know, finding a good group to belong to and you know having people who are encouraging you in relationship with Jesus Christ is going to be important to help overcome some of that temptation and peer pressure but yeah but there's a lot I mean you know, that we could go into but I don't uh, know how deep yeah. we want to go down that rabbit hole <laughs> yeah that is definitely definitely a really deep rabbit hole that we do not want to be a part of um, but kind of uh, another side of things I know your staff with rock kind of what is the version of it coming from a college student, Maggie, with dealing with the temptation and kind of the student life with that. I know you go to OU, so kind of what's, give us a little feedback on that. So I feel like as like a Christian going into college and dealing with that temptation, you just have to, you really have to hold yourself accountable because like Dodger kind of said, like you go from having all these people who were holding you accountable to going to where you don't have all those groups and everything. Like you have to you have to hold yourself accountable and know like like what's right and what's wrong for yourself and as a Christian you know so I feel like finding a group like rock is really important to like have that time that you can spend with those people instead of going out and risking that higher chance of getting tempted you know yeah, and kind of just a little brief history of myself. There was a lot of temptation involved with my younger life um, with family and friends, um, and that was something that I definitely needed to work on whenever I got into, you know, later in high school towards my senior year and coming into my freshman year of college. I then began to have the ability to do that on my own, and there, don't get me wrong, there was temptation. I mean, there's peer pressure involved with that you know you have your friends that they say yeah we're going to a party this weekend do you want to come you know we'll give you a ride um, and then sometimes you deny that especially with my sake being a Christian and denying that because I know the cost of that and I know what the aftermath of that is and then they kind of look at you a little differently and so Dodger working with that and having those people come to you and denying that you know I'm not going to that party <laughs> you've got that students that come in and say you know what am I doing wrong if I'm saying no to that and I've getting rejected for that and none of my friends are there what do you, what's your thoughts on that Dodge? yeah and you know the interesting thing is um, you know with peer pressure particularly like we all feel that like even as adults like I'm not gonna sit here and tell you like I don't feel that same tug every now and again like you know, somebody says, oh, you know, like, I don't know why you're doing this or why you, you know, why don't you just come out and do this, you know? And so, like, I think it's something that we all learn to, to struggle with, hopefully as Christians, that there's going to be times when the values of this world that we live in clash with our Christian values. And 
you know, you can either choose to crumble to that type of your pressure, or you can like stand strong. But the, the interesting thing that I, I've noticed too, is that it goes the other way too. Like we can be a positive peer pressure for the people in our lives as well. Um, you know, like Maggie mentioned the word accountability. Like I think that's an important part of that peer pressure. Like even as an adult, um, you know, I have guys who are influential in my life that hold me accountable that, um, you know, like sometimes do, they have to tell me the really difficult things that I don't want to hear. Um, but it's, it's in the encouragement that I'm living the life that Christ has called me to and not just kind of succumbing to the things that the world says, no, that's fine or that's okay or, you know, it's good for you even uh, when we know scripturally, you know, that we're to stand up against those things. So, um, so yeah, so I think, you know, like I do have students come in and like they say, well, you know, like, well, this feels good or this seems enjoyable. Why can't we do that? And so like I always go back to scripture. I'm like, well, like sin by its very nature is pleasurable it's desirable if it wasn't you know why would you do it you know like it's like when you're a kid you, your parents say don't stick your finger in the socket and of course you go and you do and ow that hurts why don't you do it again <laughs> because it really hurt if it felt good what would you do you'd go back again and again and again and so i think that's kind of how sin works so yeah and coming out of you know the college aspect of that you know Josh, you're now working with the Rio Grande students here at Rio. What's kind of something that sticks out to you with dealing with the temptation with that? Um, it's definitely different because uh, obviously I'm very, very new to this job. And so uh, coming from that standpoint, being um, a college student myself at one point, even though it was for a short period of time, obviously I didn't have that group like you mentioned. I did not have that um, core group that kind of helped me accountable and like helped me keep my faith and stuff when I was in college I was definitely uh, tempted a lot and did and made decisions that weren't exactly the best for me um, so I have obviously experienced that and been through that and so just to kind of like transition from being a student to now going into um, college ministry it's it's definitely a big change and and uh, it's Oddly enough, it's a lot of fun because it gives me the chance to learn and to be able to, you know, look back to Scripture and see what it has to say and, and kind of um, learn from that experience as well as just kind of uh, getting more knowledge and the ability to be able to discern but also to be able to, like, um, set an example for the students and uh, just kind of be better about that. So, yeah. Yeah, and kind of one thing that... Uh being able to set an example about is sometimes those students do feel like they're getting left out, mm -hmm. maybe even being lonely, uh, trying to be a attention seeker at times. And sometimes they come up to me being in the student ministry and being able to help them as my fellow peers and my fellow students and being able to be a part of them with friends. They come up to me and they say, well, then what's, what's kind of the enjoyment of life then if you're mm -hmm. not able to do that? And that's kind of a sad thing to hear, but at the same time, they're right. Because there are those times that you want to be able to go out, have fun, enjoy life, but the only option you think you have is go out and party and do things that right. probably is not recommended to certain people in certain age groups. So coming from that perspective, what do you think the kind of the scripture side of things you think that uh, kind of gives you a better definition or sure. even a better understanding for students to understand from the script, scripture point of view, Josh? Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, when I hear stuff like that, I always think, you know, Jesus' promise to us in John, he says, you know, I've come that you can have life and have it to the full or the fullest, depending on which translation you're reading. And so, like, I, I feel like so many times, and I'm sure we've all experienced that, like, you know, we felt like, oh, man, I'm really missing out on something. And so you go out and you, you try it, you experience it, and then, you know, it leaves you feeling empty or it leaves you disappointed, discouraged maybe, whatever it is. Um, but that's not what we find when we follow Jesus. And, and a lot of times I, think, I know, like, people find out, like, you're a Christian, and then they go, oh, man, like, there's this whole list of things that you can't do if you become a Christian. That must be a, a really boring or a very you know, I don't know, uneventful way of life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, man, if you even knew, 
Like, if you even knew, like, some of the adventures that following Christ has led in my life. And it's not just, I mean, mission trips, because we talk about that a lot, but those are obviously, but, like, man, the relationships that I've formed with people, um, you know, just the things that I've seen God do in the lives of others and in my own life. I'm like, man, like, there's, there's not a worldly experience that I could stack up against those and go, yeah, it's, it's almost as good. Because it's not. Like, they're not even comparable, really. And so... No, I, I think, like, the, the, what we call, like, the law, like, you know, especially in the Old Testament, we talk about, well, there's the law, there's all these things that you can't do, you can't eat, you shouldn't wear, you know, and, like, those weren't there, you know, God's not a cosmic killjoy, they weren't there to try and, um, you know, make the ancient Israelites, or even us today, you know, feel trapped, or, you know, to lead them away from this life that was somehow better, they were guidelines to give them the best shot at a good life here and now. You know, that's, that's why God gave them and gave us those directives is to actually make our lives better. So, Yeah, and you know, coming from the college and being able to learn that, especially whenever you're explaining things like that, it's sometimes you feel that it's hard to kind of pull away from it. Yeah. And you may get the feeling that, you know, I'm stuck here, my friends are here, my you know, my mates are here, my, everybody I'm acquainted to, everybody I know in this college campus here, because a lot of times the students aren't always from here. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have the aspect, oh, well, you know, I've got other friends at the other end of the county or the other side of the city. And it's sometimes hard to kind of deal with that coming from the position that's like, well, I don't know anybody. So what are some tips that you think coming from the student ministry side of things um, first, and then we're going to move over to Maggie and see what kind of tips that you may have found out to kind of stay away from it or even just, you know, say no. What are some tips you think, Doug? Do you want me to field this one first, or do you want to go for it? Jeff, okay. So um, so tips is, one, again, we we have this tendency to believe, like, oh, we're the only ones. Like, you know, I'm, I'm the only Christian in this room. I'm the only person... And, like, I remember, like, when I was younger, one of the things that my dad kind of instilled in me was that, um, you know, normally, like, when you're in a situation, you know the right thing that needs to be done, and you stand up and do it, but there's usually several other people in the room that want to do the same thing, that were just lacking the courage, and that when they see you stand up and do that thing, then that sometimes gives them the courage to stand up, too. And so I, I think, because there's so many times, like, I've heard students, and, and and I know, like, for every horror story that I hear about, like, oh, we had a professor and they were challenging our Christian beliefs, like, there's lots of other pr professors that don't do that or that, you, you know, at the very bare minimum have a respect for people's Christian beliefs. But, like, I've always heard those horror stories about, like, you know, somebody comes in or a professor comes in and you know, like, why are you a Christian? And, you know, like, you start to kind of stumble over your words and they, like, you know, try to make fun of you or whatever. But, you know... I've always found that even in the situations that the one person that stands up, that stands for their faith, that there is usually when they walk out of the room, they feel like defeated and discouraged, that there's like a line of people that line up afterwards say like, man, like we wish that we would have stood up to, we wish we would have said something. And so I, I think the temptation is, is a lot like that too, that even though you may feel in the, the moment like, man, I'm the only one that doesn't want to go along with the crowd right now, or I'm the only one that feels like this decision is wrong. I really believe that if you are brave enough to have the courage enough to say, hey, you know, like, I, I'm out. This isn't good. This isn't, you know, because even your friends who aren't Christians, like a lot of it comes down to like, that's just a poor choice, right? You know, so even for them to, to hear you say that, maybe there's somebody else in the crowd that's thinking the same thing that just didn't have the courage to stand up and, and say it. So, yeah, and I like what you mentioned about that because, you know, it seems as though like we're alone and stuff like that and lost and again like we feel as though we don't have anybody there but um, in reality like when you do stand up for your faith and chances are there's probably going to be somebody else that's right around that's backing you up on it and I that's especially why I like rock because you know it's a faith-based community and so you got these group of people that can come together and mm -hmm. and you know use scripture and look at scripture and if you know somebody's questioning something we're able to you know um, come together and fellowship and be able to learn and see like oh this is you know not exactly what we should be doing or mm -hmm. how can we change that and 
one of the things that I always like to go back to in scripture is um, where it talks about confessing your sins to each other. Um, because I, I find that it's so important because you want to bring it into that light. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to hide it in the darkness and things like that. Like, cause if you're genuinely struggling with it and just going with the flow, you're not going to enjoy it that way either. If it's left in the dark and you're hiding it from everybody, then what good is that going to do as well? And that's just kind of how I've seen it. That's how it's been able to help me to kind of be able to get out of that point and be able to like try and you know, change and, you know, get better and learn scripture and what it has to say about certain things and, and why we live out the life that we do, even though to worldly standpoint, it's not fun. It's a boring life to live. But like you mentioned, it, it's not the case at all. We have so many cool experiences that we get to enjoy and feel fulfilled in this life. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And Maggie, what's kind of something that you may have heard or um, a little tip here and there that kind of made you be able to kind of say, you know, I don't, I kind of want to stay away from that. So I feel like, like one of the main things that kind of lead to temptation, like as a college student, is seeing everyone else doing it. Kind of like they were just saying, but like, like oh, like these people are going, like everyone's doing this. This is so. This is what's cool. Like this is what I want to do. I want to be cool too. And so I feel like a big part of that is just saying like, well, like like separating like what what maybe is cool to them doesn't have to be cool to you like everyone has their own interests and like I think kind of like stepping out of your comfort zone this is kind of what we talked about at rock at the other podcast but like stepping out of your comfort zone and just kind of like trying something different out is like could change your life I mean like I don't know I'm trying to put this into words but like a lot of people at my school might see that like a lot of people drink or whatnot, anything really. And then like some people might see like, oh, like Maggie's traveling. She's like going to Mexico, New Orleans, and she looks like she's having fun. Maybe I want to try that out. So just like, I don't know. It's, I feel like there's a big circle, but like basically like to stay away from that temptation, you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and then to show people that it's okay to do that so that they can also, you know, like you said, like kind of follow in your footsteps, like you don't have to go with the flow, you know? Yeah, and you know, you said it there being able to just, you have that look, you you be able to say, you know, yeah, I'm going out, I'm having fun, I'm enjoying my life, but I'm not going out and partying, I'm not going out and doing things that I shouldn't be doing, I'm going out and I'm serving with my fellow members of, you know, shameless plug rock, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> being able to just go in ministry and have a different part of spec or different specter spectra on you know what it is on the outside world you yeah. know what it is in you know three miles down the road you it changes drastically the farther you get away from home because you may think oh if it's like this here it's like this everywhere mm-hmm. and it's not right and so going on mission trips is kind of one of the big things of being able to just enjoy life have good ministry learn some things and you know follow God as, as well as everybody else that's coming around you. So we're going to finish up here with some scripture. I'm going to read Ephesians 5:18 and we're going to kick it off to everybody else. Uh, but Ephesians 5:18, this is the New International Version. It says, "Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit." Maggie, you want to do yours and then lead it off to Josh. Okay. Well, I'm doing Ephesians 2.10, and it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And then the last one that we got is Romans 13.13, which is, Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in kerosene and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Yep, and we're going to kind of kick off with a in prayer um never decided who was going to do it so i guess josh is the one that got uh, <laughs> All right. got selected He's by got his boss told. so uh josh why don't you pray for us sure father god i just thank you for this time that we just get to get together and just talk about this topic and just all these other topics that we've had in the past few uh vlogs and stuff and just thank you for 
uh, getting us here safely. Lord, I just pray that um, somebody just takes something away from this today, that they can learn something new, that they can learn some tips and tricks that we can just all fellowship together and just kind of rely on each other and rely on you most of all. Um, God, just thank you for this time. Amen. Amen. And if you want to get connected with Rock, you can follow us up on Facebook or Instagram at Reach Out on Campus at Rio as well as OU. Uh, if any student that's uh, part of Rio wants to come and join us, be more than happy to let you come on in. Uh, those of you watching and listening from home, if you want to come and join our Rocket Rio podcast, send us a message on Instagram or Facebook, and we'll uh, set you a date and be able to get you in here, and uh, we'll have some good times. Um, if you want to look on our line, and uh, you'll find our QR code that's uh, posted around the school, and that'll also send you to the Facebook and Instagram page, and as well as the new events. We've got a fall retreat coming up October 14th through the 16th, which is, I believe, next weekend. It is $30 a person, and uh, if you're bringing a friend for friend, then uh, they get to come for free. So it's uh, definitely interesting, and it's a really good time for those to just kind of go out and relax and have some good worship and ministry. And like I said again, if uh, anybody wants to come and join, by all means, we'll see you next Crosswalk. See ya.